Podcast. Welcome back to the Chris Cross Corner Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Canty, and we have one of the great debaters on here, Basil Lowe. How you doing, Basil? I'm <clears throat> doing okay. How's life in, what is it, Bedford Township? Uh, yeah, it, you're not wrong, but... I was like going off just Toledo. Hey man, the stuff that go. goes on here in Bedford just. So yeah, so Toledo. So does Bedford border Toledo? Yeah. Okay, so that so it's on the border. Okay. Yeah, it's basically the first thing you hit once you leave Ohio. Okay, is it on like the is it on Lake Erie or is that Luna Pier? That's that's Luna Pier. That's Erie Township. Okay. Interesting. We're just the next neighboring one over. Hmm. Oh, so you're like US 23 over there on that side. No, so for us, it's you go off of Telegraph, you go off US 24. Mm-hmm. Anything east of that is Erie. Anything west of that is Bedford, LaSalle. Oh. Ah, I never knew that. Interesting. All right. Uh, before we begin, uh, shout out to all the members of the Crisscross Corner Podcast Facebook group. Journey to 1,000 members. So we're on our way. We're almost there. Thank you for everybody who has supported and joined the conversation every week and every day sometimes. Uh, Go to Criss Cross Corner on YouTube. We have a YouTube page. Uh, We are on our way to 1,000 subscribers. We have everything else but the 1,000 subscribers. So if you want, you know. If me and, you want me and Basil to make money, you got to subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the show. And speaking of subscribing to the show monetarily, go to anchor.fm slash Corner slash support. $5 a month gives us money for StreamYard because StreamYard costs a lot of money. $50 a month. Uh, Zoom, $20 a month. So that's $70. Uh Food tour money, so we don't we don't have to spend our own money on food tours. You know what I'm saying? We can use that for food tours. So all that money goes towards our content. So please, please subscribe, and thank you for your subscription and your support. All right, today we're going to talk about the Lions, the Red Wings, the Pistons, the Tigers, and maybe some FC. We're going to talk about some Detroit sports. And before we talk about these Detroit sports, their best moments, their worst moments, we're going to go go to our first segment of the show, which is what you do in Detroit. We're going to talk about some news stories around the world, as well as news stories locally here in Detroit. Uh, Florona, coronavirus, Delta, Omicron, or whatever you want to talk about it, it's here and it's here to stay. So... Please socially distance. Please mask up if you go outside or go in large groups. If you have to go out, do that. If you don't have to go out, please stay home. If you can work from home, please do that. Uh, Numbers are going up at high numbers. So please, please, please watch out. Stay home. Stay safe. Get tested. Get the vaccine. Get the booster shot. All right. Uh, What's next? Maya Angelou was in the news. Yeah. She is in the news. Okay, the United States Mint has begun shipping quarters featuring uh, Maya Angelou on it. So it's the first coin mm. in America with an African-American woman on the quarter. And I think they said that there's going to be, what was it, like three or four more that are going to be kind of printed out within the next couple of years? On quarters? Like different figures? Mm-hmm. Wow. So it's they're all going to be based on women. Okay. They went with Maya Angelou for uh, African American woman. They're then going to start pulling off. I have, I have to remember the list. They're going to start doing uh, Hispanic women, Asian American, uh, Caucasian, and so on and so forth. Hmm, I remember they said the ones that are most likely to. Go on. Let me see. U.S. Mint Women's Quarters. So, oh, so they're gonna have Sally Ride 
Okay. Um, Wilma Mankiller. I forgot. Native American, too. We got that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nina Otero Warren and Anna May Wong. Hmm. Anna May Wong. Well, obviously, I think we all know that Maya Angelou is the, the biggest name of that whole one. Yeah, out of those names, you know. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, speaking of uh, women and minorities, um, North Korea. We're going to ship going over to North Korea real quick. Uh, Kim Jong-un banned leather coats to stop people in North Korea from copying his style. I love North Korea, man. Hold up. What do you do? He banned leather coats to stop people from copying his style. Uh, you know, North Korea is known for a lot of bad things. But this was just stupid and petty. <laughs> this guy. This guy does not quit. He's like, that's it. No more members only jacket for you. Right. <laughs> if you wear one, we're going to have another ceremony. 250,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> How much you want to bet it's really it's not so much of him not wanting others to copy him. It's he wants all that leather to go to his coats. Well, sure. like, oh no, that means let's go for me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, well, gonna come back to the States, back to Michigan and Canada. Now, there is a proposed new route for Amtrak between Detroit and Toronto. Now this will be amazing for a lot of Detroiters and Metro Detroiters because sometimes we don't, you know, switch over from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. And we hate being pulled over by the cops or the Mounties in Ontario. And this train will alleviate a lot of those pains. So it's said that Amtrak and Canadian Pacific Railway Limited today announced an agreement with Amtrak supporting the proposed combination of uh, Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern Railways. This agreement would have would pave a new route from Detroit to Toronto. This would be so great. So now here's my thing that I'm trying to figure out. They're planning on doing it through Windsor, mm-hmm. but where would it be coming from, though? That's a good thing. We need to, I do. We do need to look at the uh, current infrastructure to see what they could do, or all all all, all of them using that tunnel that goes under the uh, the river. That would have oh, to be a bus. Hmm. Actually, it can't even be a bus. Well, it, it could be a bus. Be a but bus. <laughs> oddly enough, a bus can fit down there, and it's honestly, I have no problem taking the tunnel. Okay, I don't get phobia of that but when i'm down there and i see a bus coming because it's only w- one lane each way there's no no divider or nothing when i see a bus it, it almost like makes you want to go like like this like don't like don't touch me so all, all, all the all the rails are on the windsor side right that's what i'm assuming they're going to try to do I have to do some more research on this story because, because there's there's amazing. nothing for trains on the Gordy Howe, and you're certainly like the Ambassador Bridge is falling apart as it is already just for semis. What and about the tunnel? What about the tunnel? The other tunnel, the train tunnel. Oh, I thought they got rid of that a long time ago. I thought they sealed oh, no. that up. No, oh, no, it's it's still functional. Uh, it could well, work. Here's the problem though. Where is it gonna co- Where is it gonna come out of? We already took out all the train stations. No, no, uh, they said that, um, what's it called? The uh, Ford building, the old train station, they're going to... Uh, Michigan Central? Yeah, they're going to reactivate it. If Okay, if they do that, that means they finally came across one of my numerous uh, grad papers talking about mm-hmm. doing just this. Like, we need to do that. Right. This will be nice, though. We can all do a Great Debaters trip to Toronto. That's because I've done, like, Four papers, like urban planning related, of like, hey, yeah. By the way, we could just bring trains back through uh, Michigan Central. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Real awesome. Speaking of awesome, 
Steve Eiserman. And the Red Wings have hired Nicholas Lidstrom as VP of Hockey Operations for the Red Wings. Hmm. So, so tell me, that, Chris, why does that name sound familiar? It sounds familiar because we're about to talk about these damn Red Wings later in the show. Hey. How they dominated <laughs> back in the 2000s and the 90s. So, yeah. So I think everybody's going to come back to be an executive for the Red Wings so they can – Finally, win a championship again. Who who would have thought? Or how much you want to bet? They probably never have thought of. As soon as they retired from hockey, therefore you know Detroit, they're like, oh, we don't have to, <clears throat> we don't have to ever come back here ever again. <laughs> say, hey, want a want a few million dollars to be VP of hockey operations? Like, she, who might have turned that down? Or shoot, just. If someone in the 90s said, yeah, these same guys, they're, they're going to win us a championship in the 2020s. Like, I'm telling you, the 2020s are weird, man. They're very weird. Now, speaking of weird, okay, you've heard of Uno. you heard of Dos. you even heard of Uno Flip. Oh, yeah. boy, it does another one. We have... All wild game. So all wild cards. Okay. So Uno introduces all wild, which allows you to double skip players and swap hands with opponents. Talk about ruining friendships. This is is about to mess up everybody. It honestly almost sounds like, because when you play regular Uno, when you play Uh uh, stackable, like Uh when you play the stacking rules, and the zeros and sevens. That sounds like all they do is just. That's what it sounds like, Basil. Shut up, Basil. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I'm telling you, too many people are like reading my papers or listening to me talk. You're like, I can steal like that it. idea. <laughs> <laughs> they stole my idea, goddammit. I'll never play it. <laughs> and I thought Frankie. Mi- and here I was thinking that Frankie Muniz movie <laughs> would never become a real thing. Mm-mm-mm. I haven't seen Frankie Muniz in a minute. What's he doing? I wonder if he still even remembers doing Malcolm in the Middle. He still yeah. does it. He still couldn't remember oh, that. I forgot he was. Wasn't he like a race car driver? And he like got into a crash or something. Yeah. And he lost all of his memory. That's messed up. Yeah, like he would watch old episodes and be like, "I don't remember doing this all like at all." Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Uh, next on my list, you're gonna laugh at this one. Hold on, you're really gonna laugh at this. So, uh, LA cops, I'm gonna say this slowly so Basil can it can build up for Basil to laugh. Okay, okay so, on, so, so when you're, you're in Los Angeles, California, okay, you're a police officer in Los Angeles, California, so you're a pretty busy guy. Hold up, can I take a guess on where I think this is gonna go? What? Is there going to be a black guy with a mustache wearing a Detroit Lions leather jacket? Okay, so no, not, no, okay, no. so not, not nothing Beverly Hills Cop related. Okay, no. So you're in LA. You're a police officer, so you're pretty busy. You're um, chasing something with your lights on. You get to the place, and there's no suspect. What's the place? I should ask. Uh, it, it's a it, it's an undisclosed place, based to based on records, until for now, until it gets to public records. Okay, so chased, they chased where they last were. Yeah, couldn't find them. They couldn't find the couldn't find the culprit. Guess who the culprit was, Basil? It was themselves. No. It was a Snorlax on Pokemon Go. They were chasing a Pokemon Go game, a Snorlax on Pokemon Go. <laughs> Guess instead of the robbers that they were facing, they were like, "Yo, the Snorlax is over here, but the bank robbers are over there." They went after the Snorlax. Okay, so the Snorlax. Okay, so the Snorlax wasn't moving. It was okay. It wasn't, no, you know how Pokemon Go, you got to go to the place to get the get the. Oh, so they got distracted mid chase. They're like, yeah. oh, "There's a Snorlax." He was like, yo, there's a, there's a Snorlax over here. Let's go get it. That yo, that, be- that Snorlax better had 
good stats. Otherwise, that was not worth it. Let him go, man. <laughs> I I want I want three or four stars on that thing. If it if it is not if it is not top, oh <laughs> your ass is fired. You're off the force. Man, like they let this nigga go. Like whoa, yeah. that's hilarious though, man. These stories, man. If you have any stories for what you do in Detroit, shoot us a DM, you know, at Crisscross Corner on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you know what I'm saying? We're everywhere. So, yes, they would be. We have a Facebook user. We don't know your name, but uh, Kim Jong Un wants that exclusive drip. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm here for the train to Toronto Uno Wild tournaments. With it would be television goal. Or just, just regular Uno would be television goal. They Zeros and sevens. Just a, just an idea on YouTube because I've seen this years ago. Just look up Uno the movie. It's a two and a half hour thing. That whole thing is just pure gold of just four friends fucking each other over. <laughs> I would love to be on that show. Mess somebody up. The the fact that it got it got onto uh, IMBD or DB to tell you how magnificent this YouTube video was. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's Frank. What up, Frank? <laughs> Usually when you go on StreamYard, you have to like type in your name and everything, so StreamYard doesn't give away your identity like that. So, just saying. So yeah, hmm. Facebook user Frank. Uh, <laughs> thank you for sending us your comments. Uh, we're gonna move on to that drip. the meat and potatoes of the show. We're gonna talk about these Detroit sports. Now, before we talk about these Detroit sports, let me just preface that I am a Detroit Lions fan. Um. They have let me down this year. However, they have redeemed themselves with having a 3-1-3 record. Yes, the Lions have 3-1-3-1. Three, one, three, and one. So 3-13-1. and one. Uh, we, we don't have the first ra- uh, draft pick. Nope. Well, we don't need it really because, you know, we already have a quarterback. But, um. Uh, You know what pissed me off for that last game, Basil? Because I know you watched it because your Packers were the opponent. Well, the thing that kind of upset me was I get it. We already clinched the conference. We already get the automatic bye. We should not be just simply putting in our backup quarterback because <laughs> it just looks bad on paper. That put him in. I was like, wait, who's that? <laughs> I was like, where's Aaron at? Yeah, people forgot Jordan Love. I saw him. I was like, I was like, Jay Love, who's that? <laughs> but then, you know, what pissed me off. I posted so, a video. I posted a video on Facebook on Sunday. These lions have been stunking up the stunk up the place for thirteen games. Maybe okay, fourteen games. I'll add in the Pittsburgh game because I was four as well. 14 games, they were trash. The three games they won, okay, the two games they won before this one, the two games they won, they they fought, you know, they fought hard, you know what I'm saying? They did this. The, the last game of the season, they pulled out all the stops. They were doing trick plays, going on fourth down, scoring touchdowns. I was like, what is, what, is this the Lions playing or is this the, the Rams? Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you, Chris. When I was watching, because I, I shut it off after a while, I was like... He was like, I'm he rage quit. Basil rage well, no, quit. because here's the thing. Like, the Packers, they're they're giving you guys, like, a pity game right off the bat. Whereas, I'm watching the Lions. They're not even giving up. They're not, you know, surrendering or bending over. They just turned the entire thing into, like, a backyard game of football. And that's, it was like, all the trick plays and all that. I'm like... How the hell is it that Detroit's playing NFL Street in real life, <laughs> and we're just over here just going like hands behind our backs, like, eh? It's like no, get 
They're embarrassing you. It wasn't even embarrassing. It was no, it was embarrassing because I was watching. I was like, if you're playing like this to keep your job, where was this to keep your job in week three, week four, week five? You could have been doing this all year. We could have been in the playoffs with an X by our name. We could have had an X Y Z. We could have we could have clinched. Could have. However, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this is a non Lions fan. I did get a little bit of a kick out of uh, you guys making Dan Campbell cry. <laughs> I, was, I was like, damn, four games in. You guys are already breaking this man's heart. He said, we try our best every week. I was like, we sure do. If you, guys didn't, if you guys didn't even get that tie yet, I was wondering if he was going to survive the season because he, he was just looked like a man of depression. Like, it's contagious. <laughs> It's contagious. Now he knows how we feel. <laughs> man, at four o'clock every Sunday, we're just sitting at home like this. Like, what a stupid motherfucking kick. Fucking Tucker. <laughs> Yo, hey, we actually got to talk about, I don't care what anyone says. To me, I count that as one of the best moments in recent uh, sports moments. What? Yeah. Actually, the Ravens have had some of the weirdest games in football history. I could do a top ten on that. But remember the game, remember the game where they had to go against um, Minnesota in the snow? Yeah. In, like, the last two minutes, they would just score, 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 score. Or the kick six against Cleveland. Yeah. And now the – what was it? How many yards was it? Like 60-something? 60 60 yeah. 65 or 67 but the fact that they did the entire science of it and it was he had basically kicked it as perfectly like correct angle power and everything but even with that all taken into account there was still a very very high probability that it would now go through like they could keep running like a thousand simulations of it it was something like still less than 5% just because of probability with like the little dimples on the football and how it would hit the bar and all that. And I'm the, like, the yeah, that, that's a miracle. The fact that it went in, I was like, really? Really? <laughs> you know how uh, uh, ESPN, Sports Center, they used to do that whole like uh, science of sports or sports of science and they would do like yeah, the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They could, they could have brought that back just with that part alone. They, they don't have it all that that back. I they still had it. No, they stopped doing that. Hmm. That's, that's why that's ESPN sucks anymore. <laughs> Let's be honest. That's true. Like people would say it's the politics or how they talk less about sports. To me, I think what was like the real final straw was uh, them overstretching uh, Stephen A. Smith. And them getting rid of that segment. Which one? The one, the science one, where they would do all the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Those were the days, man. Because I remember going like learning on how like you found out how that fumble, you know, defensive player just punches it out. It's like okay, yeah, sure he punches it, but they go in the whole science of like the amount of force and all. It's like, damn. Science actually looks cool at that at the moment. Right. Well, speaking of cool, uh, we got these Detroit sports moments we got to talk about. Um, we can just go like we can. Do you, do you have a list over there? Me? Yeah. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie to you. My list is more. <laughs> My list is more of like the devastating stuff. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that too. We could talk about that too. <laughs> I saw a video. This this whole episode came from. I was watching a video on YouTube of like the most like devastating moments in Detroit sports history, like the no hitter game, the almost no yeah. hitter game. <laughs> oh my god! I swear to God. Who was that against the? Uh, who was that? Uh, the, the Cubs or something? Or the Cleveland Indians? No, if I remember correctly, the the no hitter. I could have swore that was um. 
Oh, I'm having a brain fart. No, it wasn't anyone local, though. It was a far away team. A team. A long time ago. The galaxy far, far away. We see Detroit no hitter game. No hitter back call. Um, yo, it's the Cleveland Indians. I don't remember it being it, the Indians. It was a rivalry. It was a rivalry game. It was June second, twenty ten. So that was that was that was ridiculous. It was uh, it was Jim Joyce, the first base uh, umpire. I was like, yo, Jim Gillen went, Jim Leela went, went crazy that night. That was crazy. I never seen an old white man get so angry <laughs> over a call in my life. God, I don't remember. Especially Jim Leela. He was always so calm. It was, he was clearly out for that one. For some other reason, my brain was thinking it was like, the Orioles or something. The Orioles. I forgot they were a team. Yeah. So did so did the rest of Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore forgot they were a team. That's bad. I'll never That's forget bad. what was it <clears throat> during one of the um um what was it the Freddie Gray oh that whole riot uh-huh. at the time they decided to still play the baseball game. But no one, and I mean absolutely no one showed up. So it was like almost like watching a COVID game <laughs> years <laughs> years before. Like the fact you could hear the crackle in the bat on television is like perfect. Great. Yeah, speaking of the Tigers. The last time we won a World Series was 1984. Oh, I mean, what happened in 07? No, no that was the last time we, we lost. I mean, I mean, that was the last time we won the World Series. No, I know. I said, oh, what happened in 07? Like I said, we we last won a World Series in <laughs> <laughs> That was before my mom graduated high school. Damn. At Cast Tech, shout out to Cast Tech High School, downtown Detroit. Oh, it was against the uh, it was against the San Diego Padres. That's crazy. The San Diego, what? I forgot they were a team. What the eighty four? Mm-hmm. No, it was the Cardinals. So it's right here. I'm looking at it. It had to have been the Cardinals because the 07 was a rematch between the two. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the uh, eighty four. Yeah, that was. Hold on. It says it right here. It says the San Diego Padres. Because I know in 07, that's the. I hated, I hated that series. That's why I don't talk about it. <laughs> the 07, the, oh, the 06 07 World Series is just like the. Um, was it the 05 NBA Finals? We don't talk about those. We don't, as Detroit fans, we don't talk about it. Hold on. We will, and we will get to that once we get to the Pistons. He's still distraught. He doesn't think that the Padres went to the World Series. Yeah, it's like, huh? <laughs> I forgot the Padres were a team, to be honest. Yo, is this... Um, I feel like this is one of those um, Mandela ultimate, effects for me. Yeah, ultimate Universe is this. Yeah, it's like hold up. Are you serious? Did they really? Oh, win? Because yeah, I remember the whole the whole time because I remember watching the 06 World Series because oh my like I remember like having a lot of family members over for that entire thing. Oh six oh the 06 World Series was someone else though. 2006 World Series. Let's see. Yo, this is bugging me. It was it was the St. Louis Cardinals for 06. Yeah. I'm talking about 84. But no, so that's what I'm saying is I remember them talking about in the news where it's like, oh yeah, these guys last played in a World Series together, you know. 
and Detroit won. And it's like, oh, okay. Okay, 84. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, I remember that because I remember uh, I believe that was the first season that Justin Verlander or one of the first seasons that Verlander was the pitcher. And the only reason why I even watched baseball, like, or Tigers baseball at the time was just because you had like Ordonez and all of them. Yeah. yeah. Martinez and Ordonez and Cabrera. Anderson and yeah. And Polanco. Yep. Everybody was on the team. Yeah. We had stacked teams in the 2000s, everybody. Detroit had some stacked teams. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. We don't know. We're still figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, what did happen? <laughs> uh, the 1968 World Series, too. That was the Tigers. We won against the – that was that was probably the St. Louis Cardinals. Maybe that – hold on. I'm about to – I'm looking at it right now. It's just the Car- – yeah, the Cardinals. Maybe that's what it was. I was. Maybe that's what I was getting mixed up, memory-wise. 1968, yeah. In black and white. <laughs> no, that had no bad in color. It says what? It's right here. I'm looking up the, the, the YouTube videos in black and white. Well, no. The color television back then just sucked. It just looks black and white. No, no, no. no back then, color was one of those premium things. <laughs> you have to be like, you want a color one? That's extra $700. Good times. Good times. Shit, I'm about to look. I'm about to look that up. Maglio Ordonez hits home run to send well to, to send the Tigers to the World Series in 2006. Yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing color ones here. Oh, and here's a black and white. So, oh, that may have just been a cheap uh, local station, but probably. Probably probably a WDIV local for. I'm sorry. Anyway. I was like, it's 1968. It's like you, they're gonna have Beverly Hillbillies and Gidget in color, but they're not gonna have the World Series in color. Nah, fam. We keep it in America. <laughs> okay, so it was October 14, 2006, bottom of the ninth, with two outs, runners on the first, on first and second. Okay, so we had a, a, a home run. So that's so that's so that's a triple. Three man home run, walk off home runs. That's crazy. I was gonna say, yeah, that <clears throat> that's probably the only good thing I can honestly remember from the Tigers. What about what about twenty twelve? No, I'm talking about of that of that whole series. Oh yeah, the whole season. season. Yeah, from that. What was it? NL? Are we in the AL or NL? I don't, know. I don't watch baseball like that. Should be AL. Okay, AL, ALCS. I believe they're American League. I don't remember. I'm not, Look, I'm, not a baseball I'm a Cubs fan. fan. Therefore, I have no reason why I should be following baseball that well. That that's funny. Well, a lot of things happened. We had what was what was uh what was uh oh we faced the Giants in 2012, right? I think we faced the Giants because they won. They were they were winning every two years. And 2012 was one of those years. For some reason, my brain was going to... Um... Oh, the Red Sox. It could be the Red Sox. Yeah. The Red Sox won like 2013? Because I think that was when they still had Manny. Mm-hmm. And I should yeah. know this because I, I like watching the Red Sox. I just watch I got... the World Series. I don't watch any other baseball games but the World Series games. Well, no, for me, it's because especially where we are in the country, uh-huh. you're you're you are lucky to get a good signal from WGN Chicago. WGN, yeah, that's how that's how you got to watch Cubs game, and that was rare. So otherwise, if I if I wanted to watch baseball, it was going to be the Red Sox. Mm-mm-mm. Goodness gracious! Yeah, speaking of Chicago. Um, we're not speaking of Chicago. We want to talk about hockey or basketball next. Good or bad? Both. You know what? Let's do basketball. 
All right, let's talk about let's talk about the bad about basketball. Now, the Pistons have been a laughing stock of the NBA um, ever since they were, you know, ever since they were here in Detroit. Uh, they had some they had some years in the seventies, didn't win a championship. Then the eighties came around. You know, they drafted a guy named uh, Isaiah Thomas. Uh, Never heard of him. Actually, we had a few guys together, you know what I'm saying? One, two, ti- one, two titles, you know what I'm saying? You know, against the team, you know, Magic Johnson and, you know, the Lakers uh, beat them in 89. Then 1990 came around. They were like, let's do it again. Let's do it against the Portland Trail Blazers. Uh, then 1991 came around. <laughs> Speaking of Chicago, uh, Michael Jordan, they, he says it in his uh, biography, and uh, what was it uh, the last the last dance or something like that? What's it called? Is it called the last dance? No, the last the last dance was technically um after you just came back from basketball or from baseball. Well, yeah, but he he talks about in one episode like the Pistons beat my ass, so I had to bulk up and go to the gym. Oh I yeah, no bitch. I ain't no bitch. <laughs> so. Pistons thought they could run over Michael Jordan again. And that's where it was the, and I took that personally. Uh, <laughs> then Michael Jordan was like, uh, no, I'm about to win these championships. And he won six of them. The Bulls pretty much ran the 90s, basically. It was the one Pistons championship, two Houston Rockets, and one Spurs championship. And then the rest were all Bulls. You couldn't see a basketball in the 90s and not think of the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan. That's how powerful it was. I okay. I will say this as a Bulls fan, as a little kid growing up, there was one other team that I should say that kind of grabbed my interest of watching. Maybe that? two actually. The first one was the Jazz. Okay, Utah Jazz, Carl Malone. Okay, and John Stockton, just the and whole. John Stockton. Uh, and then two was uh, Supersonics. He still, I think he still has the most assists, doesn't he? Stockton? I'd have to double check. I think it I think that may have been uh beaten recently. Hmm. That's true. Well speaking of records beating, Steph Curry beat the all time three pointer record a few weeks ago. Yeah. He beat that. With Ray Allen and Reggie Miller in the stands. So And they spent like fifteen minutes <laughs> just doing applause before they're like, okay. We're we're on we're on a TV schedule here. Wait, we're on a TV schedule. We got we got to get to the West Coast game after this. Y'all fucking up. The game ended at like ten thirty. Oh my god, dang! What was the game? But yeah, the Pistons, man. And then we came back in the two thousands with the going to work Pistons. Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, Tayshawn Prince, Rip Hamilton, Chauncey Billups, Antonio McDice. Yeah, I got I to gotta drop that name. Oh, and Darko Militich, everybody who's watching this podcast or listening right now, Darko Militich was the youngest NBA player to win a championship, and he did absolutely nothing. Us, drafting, like, us drafting Darko Militich was the best thing that could ever happen to Detroit. You're also the type yeah, of person that back. would say that Kobe's not the GOAT. Ooh, Brian he's... Scalabrine is the GOAT. Okay, okay, we're not we're gonna talk we're not we're not, we're not gonna talk about Brian Scalabrini, okay. You are the type of person that would say that though. We're not, we're not gonna talk. You are. I mean, if, if you really look at it, Kobe didn't win in his first year, did he? He didn't Stop. win. Stop. <laughs> Kobe won in two thousand. He came in the league, was it nineteen ninety six? He had a good four years until he won his first championship. And he had help. You know what Darko did? Literally nothing. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have to do squats. He wasn't even wearing a Pistons jersey when they won the championship. He was wearing a suit. Are we sure he was even a player? Yeah, he was. That was that was his first year in the league. <laughs> he won his first year in the league. He was 18 years old. Kobe can't say that. LeBron can't say that. Dwayne Wade can't say that. Nobody. If you're in the comments right now, don't come after me, okay? This is the truth. These aren't these aren't just these aren't coming from the heart. This is the truth. These are real stats. Anyway. Pistons, you know, they had, you know, 
they could have won in 03, but they just got they got swept by the Nets. And then 04, they won it. And then 05, we had to go against San Antonio. And then Richard uh, Rashi Wallace didn't cover Hori. And then that was the beginning of the end for the Pistons. Pause. Pause. Uh oh, what happened? You know what I just found out? What happened? Darko, Mil- Darko was playing basketball all the way up until a couple of years ago. <laughs> I forgot he was in the league. No, no, Where no. was he playing? Where was no. he playing? He, he stopped playing the league in 2012. He was playing back home in Serbia. Okay. Good for him. Good for him. He's going to come. I won a championship and did absolutely nothing. He's, he's basically the Grandmaster Flash of basketball. <laughs> the guy own, or is an apple farmer. I think I got this podcast before I just keep talking more blasphemy. I'm gonna put that on the. I'm gonna put that in the, in the Facebook post. People are gonna come after me. They made a folk song out of. Oh, they did. Man. They did. God, the Serbs are so. Hey man, they're hey, they're prideful. They're people, man. God, the Serbs are a weird bunch of people. Darko Milicic is the Grandmaster Flash. I'm putting it on Facebook right now. So if you guys come after me, you know where you heard it first. On the crisscross court. So, what were some bad things, Basil, from the Pistons? Well, God, <laughs> besides the last 10 years. <laughs> so I, I I can't bring up how uh what was it 2010 that was the I think that was the first, or the last time you guys did well in the playoffs uh, I believe it was 09 yeah yeah the 09 the 09 playoffs that was the last time we were in the Easter Conference finals and you guys haven't done anything since then. Yeah, we were we were we were always one and done. Oh, man, I think 2016 we we lost to uh, I think it was Cleveland, and then because we were the eighth seed, and then two years three years ago we went against the Bucks and got swept in four games, which I was Whoa. there in person. You guys, you guys lost to the Pacers. Oh, oh the, the Pacers and the Pacers in us uh, in 2016. Yeah. God damn. Or, you know, 20, no, 2016. No, that. That was the Cavs. The Cavs, yeah. I know in I know in twenty eighteen or twenty the first year of LCA we went against the Bucks. Cause I was I was there in person. We lost like a mug by thirty points. Oh, you know what we uh going back to the have have we are we all done with the Lions? Cause I just remembered Oh no, oh no, the Lions are last because that's just all work. <laughs> That's just all bad. It's like, oh my gosh, there's like some of these things I'm like actually, going on the list. I'm like, oh man. Actually, there are some good things about the Lions, but we're gonna start off with that and we're gonna just segue into the worst thing. So the Pistons are done. So the Pistons, we're we're working towards a better team. However, next year might be better. If we win every game from here on out, we could make the playoffs. I'm just saying. Because we've been on a winning streak, not a winning streak, but we've been winning games and we shouldn't have won. Like your 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 hapless your hapless optimism. We just won against the Jazz. Days. We just won against the Jazz. Okay. Uh, who else we win against? We won against the Magic because that's 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 just a goal. That's just a go ahead win. We won against the Magic. No, we, here's the, the thing: Hapless. you guys are the go ahead thing. <laughs> no, no, because they want a spot. They was playing like they playing our hearts out. So. And I like that. Everybody should play like that. Um, I still don't understand how. <laughs> I I should be happy about this. What? As a Chicago fan. Oh, like, you should be happy because the Chicago Bulls are number one right now. First in the Eastern Conference, yeah. And they're playing the Pistons right now as we speak. <laughs> how are we leading the conference? Is the conference that weak or something? Or? No, you have so many good players on your team. Yeah, but I'd rather be like have you player not seen wise. I'd rather have like the Warriors or 
know, what you have to wear is basically you basically have DeMar DeRozan, you have Caruso, you have Lonzo, Lonzo Ball. But I want Steph Curry. You have Zach Levine. You have Kobe White. Steph Curry could have been our Derrick Rose we actually deserved. You have Nikola Vesovic. Vesovic, I don't know how you say his name. You have have a pretty stacked squad. I think y'all could beat the Warriors, I'm just saying. If it came down to Chicago versus the Warriors. That would be irony, too, if uh, the coach for the Golden State Warriors had to go against his old team. I just... In the finals of all places. With Kobe White and Lonzo Ball, it just... It works. It shouldn't, though. That's the, that's the problem, <laughs> Chris. It shouldn't work. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Like, like you're, you're mad that you're number one. No, I'm, I'm happy so that I'm, At least we're not 15. In the East. I'm just so confused. It should not work as well as it is. I would. I. I mean, Basil. I understand where you're at because I used to be like that back in 2004 when the Pistons were number one. Like, why are we number one in the whole league? We got the whole Lakers squad. You got the Nets over there. Who else was big? The Pacers were huge back then. Why are we number one? Because because we had great defense. I was say Jason. I was say Jason should have kicked your guys' ass. He did in, in, in 03, and the Nets went to – the Nets went against the Spurs in 03, and they got they got whooped. And the Spurs – the Spurs is an underrated team. I'm just saying like that right now. They're a really great – that's a great dynasty. That's just a great franchise altogether. Mm-hmm. Still are, even though they are kind of weak this year, but they're, you know, just the name, the Spurs, is like, boom. It, it's like a roller. Good. It's a roller coaster. They're they're on the down. They're going to come back up. Yeah, it's it's yeah. almost guaranteed. Yeah. Speaking of that, um, yeah, my well, who are we talking about? The Pistons, the Red? No, we didn't talk about the Red Wings. Okay. Fucking Red Wings. Now, let's do this for the Red Wings. Um, the nineties were basically the late nineties. I would say. Late nineties, early two thousands, all the all of the two thousands actually. Late nineties in the two thousands. If you were not in a Red Wing jersey at Joe Louis Arena, you were getting your ass whooped. Okay, that's all I'm saying. You show up with a Blackhawks jersey, you might come out with two black eyes. You show up with a Carolina Hurricanes jersey, your hair might be messed up by the end of the game. That's how bad it was at Joe Louis Arena. This new arena, LCA, I don't know what's going on in there. They got people doing uh doing balloon animals. Yeah, like it's not it's not a hockey atmosphere anymore. It's like family fun. Let's have fun. Let's watch some hockey. We might make it to the playoffs. Every time, like when you look at any of the Red Wings teams and like, even the lower ones, uh-huh. whenever they get a new arena, they all pull that. Because I remember when Toledo, when we got our new one, the Huntington Center, they tried doing the exact same crap. They didn't like any of the hooligan. Like, they didn't like us throwing stuff if we lost the games. Like, you know, how dare you win? Let me just chuck a hockey puck at you. Or chuck an octopus. Come on now. Yeah, now they're now they're going like, don't throw an octopus. It's like, what do you think we've been doing? <laughs> that's, that, that's what we do. But no, as soon as, as soon as I found out that we were still paying for Zetterberg, even though he was no longer really playing anymore, we were still he wasn't playing. playing however, anymore. his contract, hey man, someone negotiated that contract. He basically did. I mean, he did because me and Zetterberg. I mean, who would have? No, no, no. He he didn't quite do it, but I he did. I wouldn't want to let him go either if I was the executive. <laughs> but his money, his contract was kind of like you know holding up everybody else because we couldn't get nobody. Just like Blake Griffin for the Pistons. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the Pistons, okay? Let's talk about Blake Griffin, okay? <laughs> you, come to the league, you come to the Pistons, finding out that you were that you got five, million, five more years for the Clippers. Then you find out on Twitter that you were traded to the Pistons. Then you get to the Pistons and say, oh, Detroit's my town. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it my all. I love Detroit. It's a great city. Then two years later, you get injured. Actually, all of his years we've been playing for Detroit, he's been injured. But... The last year he was injured, he was like, I'm not going to dunk anymore. I'm not going to shoot any threes anymore. 
I'm just going to sit here and collect my 39 million. He collected his 39 million. Then he got to sign. Oh, he got he traded. Did. He get traded. I don't know. He went somewhere. He went to the Brooklyn Nets. First game, Basil. Oh, I know. First game. He dunks. He shoots threes. He sets the pick. I was like, where was this? Where was this in Detroit? That's all I got to say on Blake Griffin. I still have his jersey. Go be great. Go win a championship with Kyrie and KD and James Harden <laughs> and Patty Mills, Paul Melsack, Marcus Aldridge. All the people on the Nets. They got too much money. Steve Nash. Shout out to Steve Nash. I just saw you in uh, Like Mike Steve Nash with Dirk when you're on the mess. <laughs> oh, you might like this. Uh, they have it on Disney Plus right now. No, I, I I just saw it on Disney Plus with Alyssa. <laughs> I was like, I got to tell the guys. No, <laughs> so what I was going to say, though, was like Zetterberg's contract, like what he did to us, it was not quite to the same level, but it was he basically did the NHL equivalent to the Bobby uh, Benita contract. Oh, yeah, yeah Bobby Benita contract. Yeah. Bobby Benita was even was typical baseball, though. But the fact that he, the fact that – Zetterberg managed to do that in hockey. He's like, I want, how much? Did, how much did he get after he uh, went out? Was like one point or like how many? How much money did he get? I know Bobby Benita gets like one point two million every year. One point like two million. million, yeah. Hold on. I was like, what? Who, who made this up? I'll never be poor again. He was making. I have to double check this as far as the math goes. <laughs> is he still being paid now or is he, or is he done? No, we just, just finally got done with him last summer. Oh, man. But, but he went, had to get on the ice since 2018. And even before then, his. He was, his, he was, he was, he was here and there. Right. Because I remember going to a game in like 20. Right before a cop bikes undergrad ended, like 2017 or 2016, he was playing, but he wasn't playing a lot of minutes, though. And I think that was when, uh, what's his name? The new guy, Larkin, started. I think he started like 2018 or something like that. Yeah. Oh, did you see the new, the new black player we got, Smith? No, wait, what? He was scrapping out there. He's, he's, he's scrapping. Our new, our new uh, black hockey player. He plays for the uh, Detroit Red Wings. We got a black hockey player now. Yeah, they were fighting and stuff, and then uh, the referee, the, our, the my favorite hockey referee, was like, yo, they're going to the box for fighting. I was like, god damn. My favorite ref is here, and my favorite player is here. This, I should have went to that game. Hold up. I gotta look this guy up. Yeah, his last name is Smith. Okay, I don't get it. Why is it anytime you get a black hockey player, they're Canadian? Because it's Canada. It makes sense. It just makes sense, basically. It just makes sense. What would you what'd you expect? The the black kids from uh, the Mighty Ducks from California? <laughs> Something. Like <laughs> yo, Disney, make make that a make that a real thing. Come on. Instead of making that other Mighty Ducks thing they put on Disney Plus, which sucks, they should have put like a like a Mighty Ducks four or something. That's what it should have did. Cause I don't know what happened. Cause that was just trash. They could, or they could do like a like a Brink style uh, movie. I don't know. Disney needs to do something. They are going to be doing Obi Wan Kenobi soon, which I can't wait for. Yeah. And Boba Fett. They're doing Boba, Boba Fett right now. So. Well, yeah, Book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Well, we're now we're going to talk about the Book of the Red Wings. Now, the Red Wings won the Stanley Cup in, what, 97, 98, 2002, and I think it was 08? Yeah. That was the last time we won a championship in Detroit, 2008. What was it? Oh, uh, 17. That was the first year we just didn't make it to the playoffs at all. Like, yeah. don't, like, forget losing in the playoffs. We just flat out are like, 
uh, go straight to jail, do not pass go. We was like, oh, the season's over. Let's go home. <laughs> right. It's like, like, dang, this did this thing. Uh, it all happened when we got the new arena, Basil. It happened when we got the new arena. <laughs> it was that darn Pizza Hut. You don't, you don't eat Pizza Hut, or you don't eat Little Caesars. You said pizza. Pizza's from Texas. <laughs> Is it from Texas? I think it's from Texas. I think pizza is from Texas. Fact check. <laughs> Hold up. Fact check. Let me do a fact check. Pizza Hut origination. Hey, could have been worse. Could have been Domino's. Kansas. Yeah. Wichita, Kansas. Kansas. Wichita, yep. Yeah, Wichita, Kansas. So I was wrong. Wichita, pizza, Kansas, everybody. The home of Pizza Hut and the Shockers. Or shuckers, or however they pronounce it. So that's that's gonna be a good top ten for today. I'm gonna do my top ten pizza places. Mm. Shout out to the Little Caesars, Little Caesars Arena, the Illich family. Sponsor my podcast, please. Um, then they're gonna then they're gonna make me talk about baseball and hockey all day, so I might not want to sponsor my podcast, but it's all right. Uh. New Lions, Basil. Actually, before we go to the Lions, let's talk about our new our new favorite pastime in Detroit. Uh, association football. Uh, most people like to call it soccer in the United States. Uh, DCFC, we just won the, what is it, the, the championship this year. Yeah, and the, what was the league called? The NISL or something like that? Yeah, or... so, yeah, we just won the championship. I was there for that. We won against, I think it was against L.A., we went against them. Great game. It was 1-0. <laughs> we, were there. We, were there with, we were there with the great debaters. We had a great time. Uh, we're going to do that again sometime. I didn't get to go. Yeah, you didn't. I was. I, was, we, I had the picture. I was like, wait, where's Basil? He was like, Basil wasn't there. So I was going to say, of, of all of us, besides you, I probably would have been the next biggest soccer fan of the entire group. That's true. I was that. No, he was, was that he was that Maria, work. Mark, and his sister came. Chris, or his girlfriend came. Eric came. Eric and his girl and his wife, Adrian. Shout out to Adrian. They just had a baby boy. Uh, Man, it was a great outing, and that was a really great game. Anybody who wants to see soccer in Detroit, do it, do it, do it. All right, do it because I have stock in the company. Now, just go. <laughs> I want stock in the company so bad too. Just go. Just go to the games. I think they're like twelve dollar tickets at the least. So Which is not bad. It's not bad for a soccer game, trust me. But yeah, go to go to DCFC.com. Try out and you know they have a shop with the with the merch and stuff. Speaking of merch, go to shopcrisscross.com for some podcast merch. So Detroit City Apparel and more. Shopcrisscross.com. Promo code Chris K R I S for free shipping. All right, all right, baby, let her rip. Let's talk about these lions. So hold on, before we before we talk about the lions, I do want to talk about another football team. Oh, that we're supposed to be get that that's going to be the Detroit area. Oh, what's this? The so we've had various leagues throughout history. Wait, before hold on. The, are we getting a? Are we getting a team? We are getting. Yeah, we're getting a team back. Where? So hold on. Let me let me oh, pull it up. Let, let, let me let me pull up my stats. Okay, let me pull up. Back my in stats. the day, it wasn't just the NFL. You had also the American Football League. They end up merging with the NFL in the mid '60s to do the Super Bowl and everything like that. Then they thought, okay, there's room now for another league again because now we're That's just small. back down. There's another team. So they did the World Football League. That didn't work. So they did the United States Football League, which did well until a certain Trump just screwed it all up and made him go bankrupt from lawsuits with the NFL. You know, he got too big for his britches. Now, after the AF, the AAF failed, the XFL fell twice <laughs> the united states football league is coming back therefore they're also bringing back the michigan panthers 
It's also it's it's gonna be on Fox Sports too. Yeah. Now Which here's now here's the thing that I'm wondering though. They're supposed to play this spring. The Patriots hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The head coach is vacant. So you want to put your name name in the hat, Basil? <laughs> oh, I'm tempted. Um, it's based in Michigan. No, They're gonna play in Birmingham. Though. The only thing I'm wondering though is where we're gonna play because originally the Panthers played in the Silver Dome. Where did what do you see wrong with that, Chris? Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of problem, logistical problems with playing in the Silver Dome now because uh, there's no field there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, I think they're all playing in in Birmingham for right yeah, now. Yeah. This this year they're playing in Birmingham. Next year they're gonna be back here. So I mean, they could they could play Ford Field. But do you think the Ford family is gonna allow it? I mean, no, no. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, but it is a Detroit well, team. Actually, you, I mean, it's, it's a Michigan team. It's not Detroit, it's Michigan. So they could play. They could play in Michigan Stadium. No, oh, then, then they won't get the um, the numbers. They, I don't think they can fill a hundred thousand seat stadium. No. They could what, if play. They did? what if they did? <laughs> they can't fold our team, okay? They got to keep the Michigan Panthers. <laughs> Shit, they got to – given how the, how the last two football leagues went, if we could fill up – There's no West, the big, there's no West Coast team, though. There's if they can fill up the – well, they're going to be – they're going to be trying to bring them out shortly. If they can get through one or two seasons, they're going to do – some West Coast teams. I think the most Western team is Houston. Yeah. Well, what they're going to do, though, is because the original United States Football League, they had a team, I want to say, in Arizona. I remember that. Mm-hmm. They had they had Los Angeles, they had Denver, so it's there's always a possibility, right? Eh, they just, just got to wait to see if this one can do anything. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it does anything. All right. Speaking of, we'll see if it does anything. Um, the Detroit Lions are um, they've been rebuilding since 1957. And that was the last time we had good times with the Lions. I mean, we had some other good times, but our last high point, winning a championship, the 1950s, 1957, against the Cleveland Browns of all teams. Um, yeah. Then we had, you know, some losing seasons, a lot of losing seasons, some more losing seasons, another losing season. And then we got oh, a perfect season. season. What would you say? You guys got a perfect season. Shut up. Uh, perfect season, 0-16. Dan Orlowski running out the back of the end zone for a fucking safety. Uh, I, don't, I still don't know why he's on ESPN. But um, <laughs> uh, 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 the year after that, we get a guy named Jim Schwartz. And then we won some, then we lost some, then we lost some more, and then we lost some more. Then we got the best coach in the Super Bowl era for the Detroit Lions. And guess what the Detroit Lions did? Well, I don't know what they did, Basil. Did they keep him? Okay, did, did they A, keep him? Did they B, get rid of him? Or did C, get rid of him and say that you're not good enough? And that not and winning 9-7 is not good enough? Or D, none of the above? I'm going to go with C, Chris. You are a Lions fan, Basil, because not only did the Ford family say, you're out of here, the general manager that they hired said 9-7, and seven, which would have got them into the playoffs a year before, is not good enough. This man got you to 12-4, and 11-5. The worst season was 7-9. 
okay? Then the next year you go 9-7 and, and and lose to Green Bay, and then you say you're not good enough. You know what? I might have to switch teams, Basil. I might have to switch <laughs> teams right here on the podcast. Two. Two day. And you want to know who they hired after they got rid of the best coach in Lions history? Matt Patricia. <laughs> Tell you what, though, he had a pretty cool beard. Fuck that, man. <laughs> Fuck the beard. Fuck everything about him, man. <laughs> the players didn't like him. Management didn't like him. Fans didn't like him. Bleach Report, uh, Report really liked him because he made uh, great content for uh, – Great Iron Heights. It's just too much, man. Sent him back to New England. Then we got a guy named Dan Campbell. Now, this man is the epitome of new coach. This guy came and was like, yeah, we're going to win. We're going we're gonna to bite some kneecaps. We're going to beat everybody. This nigga. He, he also said, I want a lion. On the practice field, on the sidelines. Hey, if you got him running, if that thing got loose, <laughs> we'll see how fast the wide receiver really is. Now, if you got that line, we, we can still get that line, though. I'm, I'm pushing for that line because we need it. Uh, what was it, week four? They made him a cry, Basil? Yep. Week four, Dan Campbell was like, man, if we do try our best, man, we just can't get over the hump. I was like, yo, <laughs> now he knows how we feel. <laughs> he knows how the Detroit Lions fans feel all these years. As a division rival, I, I say this wholeheartedly, okay, with sympathy oh, and all. Like when, I, when, I, when I say that, I kind of got that feeling when Cartman got his revenge against Scott Tetterman. Mm-mm-mm. It's like, oh, your tears are so delicious. <laughs> However, we did get a perfect season, a, a perfect Detroit record this year. 3 1 3. Put it in the record books, everybody. Leave it to Detroit fans to be the fine joy in that. It's it's great. It was meant to be, Basil. <laughs> it was meant it, to be. It's nothing record wise. Like, you guys could have had two perfect seasons. You could have had the record. No, we don't want that 0-17. We'll give that to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Look, if you ain't get a Super Bowl, you might as well get whatever record you guys can get. We, no, we did get a record. We Hold on. We can't, we have records. Hold on. That was a record. I have my Facebook. Matt already went off of me. He said, man, what? <laughs> About Dark Village just being the... Uh, Grandmaster Flash of NBA basketball. Where was this? Wait, what? I, I put it on Facebook. I said, Darko Milicic is the Grandmaster Flash of NBA basketball. Because <sighs> Grandmaster Flash isn't on the album for the message. He's not even on the song. So everybody thinks it's Grandmaster Flash, but it's really Millie Bell and all of them. Man, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right. Wait a minute. Wait. We for wait. We set the record for most fourth down conversions in a season. Did you guys really? So, yes. Last game of the season. What was this all year? We could have had like thirty fourth down conversions if we played like we did all year for last week. We could have been. We could have been a twelve and twelve and five team. I looked at all the games. We could have been twelve and five. Man, you're really optimistic. I'm not being optimistic. I'm looking you're being at optimistic. Game. They said every game, they had like eight games where we lost by less than three points. And they were either a field goal, they were either a, a doink field goal, either an interception, like the Atlanta game. Those are wonderful games. We could have been 12 and 5. I'm just saying. Okay, I, I might give you 11 and 6. <laughs> I'm saying that with a straight look on my face. You would have been nine and eight at best. Nine and eight, you. That you know, yeah, you right. Anyway, at best, that was on your mm. best day. That's nah, what God man. will allow you. Nah, fam, we out here. And speaking of good times, uh, okay, we're not gonna talk about that. 
Let's talk about some good times. Um, Ooh, hold on. I got one. Barry uh, Sanders uh, running 200, 2,000 meters. That was a good one. Yeah. Uh, what about the – what year was it? Like 2014 or 2015, last second, Hail Mary. That was good a good one. Bad. Good or bad moment? Good moment. For who? <laughs> Packers fans? Oh, I was saying, I thought it was good. What? what? I thought you were talking about something good. You saw my fans. I was like, wait. I was talking about something moment? good. Are I... you talking about the Hail Mary that I stayed up till 11 o'clock at night for Thursday night football? To see Aaron Rodgers, yeah, Mary. I felt, I felt ama- I felt, I felt amazing. You know what? You know, what, Basil, <laughs> I'm gonna end this episode just because you just said that. <laughs> there are moments, you know, um, we might make another uh, episode about that. Moments in sports that make your heart stop. That was one of those <laughs> fucking moments. I was like, is he gonna throw it? Is he gonna throw it? Okay, before we get to this moment of Aaron Rodgers throwing Hail Mary, you know how we <laughs> got to that damn moment. You want to know how it got to that moment? Faisal, is this a face mask? Is this a face mask? You know what? Because because it's a, because it's you guys, yes, it's a face mask. <laughs> no, no, the thing is, the thing is, he got it right here, and he went across his face, and the air just went down and pulled this thing over. So it looked like he pulled his face back. I was like, is this the most Detroit thing ever to happen? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, Are you kidding me? Oh my uh, god. He got him. He was like, it was zero seconds on the clock, too. <laughs> he just threw that me into the end zone. The, and the, the Packer caught it. I was like, yo. Out of eleven out of ten on um, ten Lions players in the end zone. One Packers fan. One Packers player got the ball. I was like, you know what? I rage quit that game. I don't know that to a tight end, may I add. There's no reason why he should have been 61 yards down the line. It was a hell Mary. Everybody, everybody got to go into the uh, uh, no a tight no. At that point, a tight end's job should be extra blocking protection. <laughs> he did. Why did he need it? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's the Lions. What can I say? <laughs> I hate you so much, Basil. You gonna? I thought you were gonna talk about something good. It, you know what? That, like I said, it was good. It was good it to was me, good. but it was good to you because you're a Packers fan. But look, if I wanted to be a real asshole, okay, I could have brought up. That, if I wanted to be a real asshole, I could have brought up the last time you guys were even in a playoff game back in 2014. We're not talking. You're this close, and then interception. It, it was or, it or was. pass interference. It was, it was, it was, it was the, the damn Cowboys. Yep. And Jody, if you're watching this, the Cowboys are losing next week, this week, this Saturday. I don't know when they play, Saturday or Sunday. Either way, they're going to lose. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys always lose in the playoffs. Let's see. The, the Cowboys play on Sunday at 4.30. So 4.30 on Sunday, book it. That'll be the last time the Cowboys will be playing this year. Y'all still them boys? I'm on my ass at eight o'clock on set on Sunday night. Y'all still them boys? Let's see another good. Wait, Devin, there's another Monday night football. I'm trying to think of another good moment for the Lions. Um, you guys had Calvin Johnson. I hate you. That's a good thing. He was. It's a, it is a good thing. He he racked up a lot of stats. He got he got a lot of points. He got us out of a lot of Hall of Fame player. Hall of Fame, yeah, yeah. Because because they were sorry for him. <laughs> I don't want to play no more. It was so bad. You had two of the best players in the game say, "I don't want to play no more." That's how bad Detroit is, man. That's so bad. That's so bullshit. I was like, that's two in my lifetime right there. 
two of mine too. What you mean? Were you, were you born when uh, Barry Sanders just said, I'm out? Yeah, it was, it was 1999. I was four years old. Oh, okay. I I know. I saw Kevin Johnson say, fuck this team. <laughs> but <laughs> Barry Sanders, I was like, I was a four-year-old. I didn't care about football when I was four. And then there was the one game. I'm trying to remember what game it was where – it was, a lot it was of like the mid. It was the mid '90s. Uh, oh, they have a whole. They have a whole compilation of D- Detroit getting screwed. Well, no, my favorite is mid '90s. I want to say it was like '95 or '96. You guys left Sterling Sharp wide open. What, what, can, can we not talk about this? <laughs> this these are these are these are uh, some more moments of my heart stopping. <laughs> No, I'm gonna call it rage, like rage quit, heart stopping rage quit games in sports <laughs> history. <laughs> Number one would be uh, Seattle versus New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. You should have ran the ball instead of throwing it. But we're gonna get to that later in another episode. You okay, for hell, Mary. I'm gonna kill you for that if I see you in person. <laughs> so stay away from this place, guys. Hey, Chris, thanks for the $70 for the Isaac Brothers cost. Boom. <laughs> That's for that Green Bay comment. Hey, if it helps you feel any better, for your uh, Rage Quit compilation, I would add the um, that not a uh, interception, Packers versus Seattle. Which one was that? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, we, uh, we had yes. two hands on the ball. Seattle had one hand on the ball. Somehow that's pass interception. No, no, no to me. Wait. It was yeah, a, it should have been a touchdown. touchdown. It was a touchdown. No. No, they declared it pass interception and that it was a touchback. Which one? Wait, which one was this? It was the Hail Mary where, yeah. Russell Wilson threw it, right? No. we Aaron Rodgers threw it. Oh, you're talking about that game. I that game. <laughs> that one, I was like, we got two hands on the ball. That's touchdown. That's touchdown. Red square. That was, that was the game where when the refs were on strike and they had to use, like, the, the scrub. They yeah. had to use the scabs. Yeah, the replacement refs. After that, they're like, okay, we're just going to give them whatever they want now. No, you don't see the worst, the uh... – was it the Rams versus Saints game? The pass interference call that it was never called. <laughs> nope, didn't see no, it. No, that <laughs> saved my uh, my football my football numbers game because we did it for that playoffs too. I was like, that saved my life. I won that year. I was like, God dang! I was like, I was like, are they gonna call it? Are they gonna call it? No. Yes, I won. I was like, can we be completely honest? Do we think? The Saints would have done much better in the Super Bowl against yes. Drew Brees versus Tom Brady. Mm. It's just, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just not fair. We just can't get what we want. We have to get Jared Goff. We got Jared Goff and the Rams. We got freaking Maroon Five. Worst Super Bowl I've ever seen in my life. That was not gonna lie. That was so. Boring. It was the most boring Super Bowl ever. Even the commercials were bad. Usually commercials saved the day, but no. No, they did not. No, they were the highlight, but even then. They were just like they, of... they were forgettable though. Oh. We can't go back to 2018 like that. That was uh, not 20. It was 2019. 2019. Wasn't it? Because 2018, that was a good That had one of the best Super Bowl players. That was a good Super Bowl. That was a good Super Bowl. That was a Philly special. (laughs) Watch me throw a touchdown and catch a touchdown. (laughs) And then then Tom Brady tried to do the same thing. He was like, ah. Yeah. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah, the Detroit Lions, man. Uh. We pray for better days. We're gonna win. We're gonna win the Super Bowl next year. Book it, twenty twenty three. 
Where, where's the Super Bowl 2023? Uh, if I remember correctly, isn't it in Indy? Um, it's somewhere in the Midwest. I remember them talking about that. Speaking of that, I just, I just clicked on the Super Bowl 53, the one that we just talked about. I think the Super Bowl. Oh, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, so we get that one. No, it's going to be Arizona State Farm Arena. Oh. Another Arizona Super Bowl. Another daytime Super Bowl. Wait, I think they actually moved it. No, because I, I thought, no, because Vegas is in, Vegas is in 2024. And then they're going to go back to New Orleans. Oh, wait, you're talking about, you said 2023, right? Yeah, 2023. Oh, no, no, I know that the Super Bowl this year is in Inglewood. It's in LA, yeah. I still say LA. I don't hate, who says Inglewood anymore? NBC. What's the next Vegas. Super Bowl? It's going to be on. Oh, the, the one in Phoenix is going to be on Fox. That's good. Okay. Should the Super, Super, Bowl, uh, Super Bowl Dome be allowed to do any more? Super Bowls because Superdome. Did did we kind of forget how the last one went? Well, the last one. The last one was in 2013, right? I think. No, was it? Could it be? It was like it was no, it was like 2015, 2016, something like that. What happened? And in the middle of the game, the power got cut. Yeah, that was 2013 after the Beyonce halftime show. Was it? Yeah. I don't remember uh, that was the Super Bowl I didn't watch because I was at a restaurant. Shout out to Pastor Mark for keeping me at the at Famous Dave's past 7 o'clock on Super Bowl Sunday. Missed the whole game and the halftime show. I had to watch Beyonce and Destiny's Child on YouTube. Ooh. Yeah, you, you hate to hear about it. Where was this? Okay, okay, so yeah. I think that was the last time they were at the Mercedes Benz. Well, now it's not called Mercedes Benz Superdome anymore. It's the Caesars. Yeah, Caesars, yeah. But yeah. Well, speaking of Caesars, let's talk about let's talk about my uh let me see. Let's do my top ten pizza places before we get out of here. Ten pizza places. Well, while you're getting that set up, I cannot wait for uh, this year's halftime show. Oh yeah, everybody's waiting for that shit. It's gonna be off the. Ch- I mean, Jay Z's been producing the last like, three to four halftime show, so I know this one's gonna be good. Dr. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Mary J. Blige. It's going to be awesome. Is that all of them? I think they're having a special guest, I think. Ah, there's Kendrick Lamar, but... Oh, hey, Kendrick, hey, Kendrick Lamar needs to be in there because he's from L.A. He needs to be in that one. That's going to set it off. So is Ice Cube, but where is he? I mean, Ice Cube didn't want to be in it. No, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg is from L.A. too. Yeah. So this going to be a nice one. They got Mary J. Blige, which is he's, she's from New York. And then Eminem's from Detroit. Shout out to Eastside. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, number 10, we have uh, Marco's Pizza. I had it for the first time a few weeks ago. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it, was, it was all right. It was all right? right. What would you get? Just, just regular pepperoni. I need to see if your, if your pepperoni is good. If your cheese and pepperoni is good, if that if that's you, good, I know the other pizza is going to be good. But did you get the garlic butter on the crust? Of course, garlic butter. Uh, I forgot the other stuff they had on the other things that could you could put on the pizza. The parmesan. I didn't put the parm on it. You get the parm on it, and it's it's better. Oh, so it's, it's like a little citrus butter parm. Yeah. Ooh, I can come back. Who to us? Uh, Marco's Pizza. Number nine, we have Amici's Pizza. 
Oh no, that one. The Michis, come on now. It's the pizza. That's gotta be a Detroit thing. Yeah, it's it's, it's a Detroit thing. The Michis in it, this was in Hamtramck though. One that I went to for the DCFC games. I say like, I've had buddies. Does that count? Buddies is my next one at number eight. Buddies. <laughs> Buddy's really isn't my favorite, but Buddy's is classic Detroit style pizza. I think that's what I like about it a whole lot. With the sauce on top and everything? Well, no, just that it's the classic Detroit. Like, they're the ones that started the Detroit style. Mm-hmm. So, they say that St. Louis has a style. We got to go down to St. Louis and try out their pizza. St. Louis has a style. Look at that. Look at that, Basil. Fact check. They have a style. Okay, fuck. The, you know what all it is? <laughs> it's, it's hard, crusty, thin crust. That You know how like when you go to Jets or whatever, they'll do the squares? Uh-huh. They do that on a round pizza. So you could be oh, that oh. one. So you could be that one kid that's totally screwed where you get like the... Th- Pizza that's like this. Oh, the corner? Like, yeah, from the yeah, from the That'd be messed up if everybody reaches in. Uh, when you first get yeah, the, you get uh, that. It's like, like fuck like, you. Uh, you get the burnt the burnt one with the one olive on it. No, it gets nothing. You just straight crust. <laughs> that's messed up. Is it like I would this? be I would start shaking that. <laughs> if I was a little kid at that party, I would start I would pull out a shank. All right, number seven, we have Giordano's ice uh, uh, pizza. Chicago style. Oh. I hate Chicago style. Passion. But when, Wait, I do eat it, but when I do eat it, it's delicious. No, I hate Chicago style. I just, I just don't enjoy like the idea of eating with a fork and knife. It looks like a, it looks like a, it looks like a lasagna to me. No, that's per- that's what it is. It's a, a freaking lasagna souffle. pie. A pizza souffle. That's what it is. No, because at least a souffle makes sense. Because a yeah. souffle still has, you know, that top crust on there that kind of helps, you know, dull them out like into a bubble. Mm-hmm. Theirs was like they just gave the directions to a five year old, put the cheese on the bottom, put the sauce on top. They're like, you stupid kid. Go back, get back in the playpen. Yeah. Oh my God. Go right over there, basil. I will eat. I would rather eat this newer, the St. Louis style pizza and get like nothing but the crust than I would ever eat Chicago style. God dang. Speaking of Chicago style, we have the better version of Chicago style, Lou Malnati's uh, pizza. It's way better than Giordano's. What's that? It's, it's pretty much the same thing, but it has a better taste, better sauce, better choices, actually. So, Lou Malnati's. Uh, number five, I'm gonna say Hungry Howie's. Really? Yeah. That's your Detroit zone. Maybe you gotta try Hungry Howie's down here, and you can see why I'm questioning this choice. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> once you get once you get further out of the Metro Detroit area, it kind of gets kind of. Uh... It's it's kind of like how you guys did understand my hate for Boston Mark until you saw the one I was talking about. Yeah, the one in the one in Toledo, everybody. Don't go to Toledo if you want Boston Market. <laughs> go to the ones in bigger cities. <laughs> go to Detroit, Chicago, New York City, Toronto. <laughs> yeah, if you're in Toledo and you're looking for mm-hmm. chicken, just get Popeyes, KFC, Crispy or, Crunchy. Oh, go to or go once to the mini Taco Bells in Toledo. And get some. God, <laughs> no. After two o'clock. <laughs> Those chicken wings were good, by the way. Put that out there. Yeah, how'd your butt feel after the words? Uh, it, it felt horrible. However, it tasted great. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say Sicily's Pizza in Detroit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a guess and say it's New York style. Yes. Bam. Bam. I guess I would do. Bam. New York, New style. York style. Because at least they know how to put the cheese in the right order. What do you mean? What do you mean cheese in the right order? 
I just what do you I mean? just pulled up on my phone a picture, like a stock photo of a Chicago style pizza. I just went. You want you want to kill somebody? <laughs> it just doesn't coagulate. <laughs> Maybe maybe that's what all the shootings and all and all the crime is about in Chicago. God dang! Shout out to everybody in Chicago who are listening. Who I I get Chicago. it now. I I see why you guys are so angry. I would be too. We love Chicago, you know, north of Thirty Fifth Street. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we we thank you for Sears and Montgomery Ward and McDonald's, but first skyscraper, you know, <laughs> not the first skyscraper. What's the first skyscraper, Basil, Mr. Historian? Come on. Let it was actually know. one of the first ones was actually the flat iron in uh New York God City. Damn it. God it's damn a cool it. it's a cool looking skyscraper though. It is cool. We're very weird, you know, you think it's gonna fall over, but it, it, it won't. Uh number three, we have Domino's. Detroit's own. Detroit area's own, I guess. Which one? Domino's. You know what Domino's was here? Come on now. That's Ypsilanti. Dude, it's, no one knows where Ypsilanti is, but they know where Detroit is. All, all you have to do, all you have to do, is show people the brick dick, and then they'll remember Ypsilanti. Then that's true. But I just say Detroit's own just because it's in the area, just like Sicily. No, not Sicily. Yeah, Sicily's in Detroit. Hungry Howard's was uh, based out of Metro Detroit. Man, which one would I rather have, Domino's or Hungry Howie's? Oh no, oh no, trust me, there's there's another one that I gotta put out here. And that's number two, which is Jets. I I love Jets. Jets pizza is delicious. Jets pizza is Jets pizza is Detroit South Pizza done right. So delicious. They need to put one downtown. If they did, they make a million dollars a day. But number one, you guys know what it is. We're in Detroit. They might sponsor my podcast one day. The Illich family. Shout out to the Illich family. Garden City Zone. <laughs> Little Caesars Pizza. Pizza, pizza. God, you are such a pander. No, I'm not. I love Little Caesars. I just had I just had a lunch special this uh, this afternoon. Hold on. So delicious. Great pizza. Go try it. I did a little I did a little fact checking here. Uh oh, what you got? I'll be damned, I may have been wrong. What happened? What happened? Chicago the home insurance building is considered Yeah, the home insurance building. Yeah, in Chicago. Greg's Pizza. Greg's Pizza, mm-hmm. honorable mention. Shout out to Greg's Pizza. Not the happiest pizza. Happy to leave. Damn. Me, me, me. Be happy. What other pizzas are there? Uh, shout out to uh, Papa's Pizza. Shoot, is that even still around? Uh huh. We have a few up here. Papa's Pizza. Shout out to uh, what's the what's the place in, uh, at uh, at Eastern across the street? Benito's Pizza. Shout out to Benito's Pizza. <laughs> I don't know that one. Yeah, you said Benito's Pizza. Oh my God, Chris! There's a lot of places you guys keep telling me I need to go to, and don't worry, we're gonna go to all of them. We still need to go to all the chicken places. We do. We should do an episode about that next and bring everybody in. I still say, so far of all the chicken places, for those that are either from Detroit or want to go to Detroit, I still have had the best chicken. And just and fish also from the fish station on Fort Street. Oh, the uh, fish palace, fish station. Yeah, that is still the the best place. I can dig it. I can dig it. And I don't care what Mark said. Like that, that was worth you know. But to me, I thought it was worth getting shot for. <laughs> worth getting shot for? Yeah. Some gizzards? <laughs> you want to get a shot of some gizzards? And whiting. I got chicken too. Yeah, why didn't you had chicken too? Yeah. Oh, damn. Talk about high blood pressure. And what else did I get? Oh, I think I also got hush puppies. No, what did I get? Oh, trust me, you 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 thought to get hushed that day. 
Make it suck. <laughs> That's okay. I was in the driver's seat. The bullet would have hit me before it would have hit Mark. He would have been fine. Oh, oh dang. That's why Mark wanted to go. He didn't want to get shot. Again, he was fine. Anyway, speaking of Basil being in Southwest Detroit eating gizzards and fish without knowing his surroundings, stay safe, social distance, <laughs> and be nice to each other.